Now, today, I want to talk about the protocols, the proper procedure system on the ways of governing. Remember, the prophetic is all about governing. This is going to be good, I'm telling you. Give me some hearts and likes, people. The prophetic is all about governing, all right? The prophet is a governmental office, okay? The prophet is a governmental office which represents the um, establishment of the kingdom of God. So it is an office, say office, okay? Ding, ding, pick up the phone. You're getting a call from the office of a prophet, okay? So the prophetic is a governmental office. And when you and I begin to move in the realm of the prophetic, we may not be in the office of a prophet, meaning we, ha we have a title, we have an ordination, we have a commissioning, we, we have a stamp of credibility, <clears throat> where God and uh, assembly of men uh, um, agree and confirm that you are under the grace, the office of a governmental prophet, which means that there's different responsibilities, different requirements, there's a different protocol, <clears throat> different, <clears throat> excuse me, requirements and expectations, a way for you to carry yourself. <clears throat> But when you move in the realm of the prophetic, some say realm, that means that you are a beneficiary of the office. That means that the same requirements, in a sense, are not obliged to you. But you're, you have access to the benefits of that office. Does it make sense? Okay. And of course, every single one of us, you and I, we're called to move in the prophetic. We are. What is a prophetic? Simply the prophetic is being in communion with God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. That's the prophetic. Because the greatest honor of a prophet is to be a friend of God. We are called to be friends of God, not to be puppets of man. We're called to be friends of God. Um, but we're all called to move in the prophetic. Okay, someone say amen. Um, and in midst of this smorgasbord, this uh, free liberal release of the prophetic, and this, uh, in midst of living in a day of the third wave or of the charismatic movement, where the gifts of the Spirit are being freely given because of Jesus, because of the cross, because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, in midst of the smorgasbord of so many people moving and operating in the prophetic. We need to grow and mature to a greater stature in the prophetic. Does that make sense? That's why there are protocols of the prophetic. And not a lot of people talk about this. Yeah, maybe more in the Pentecostal or the Word of Faith. Uh, not many people talk about this. But today I want to give you 10 protocols of the prophetic. And once again, what are protocols? Procedures, rules, systems to help govern the realm of the prophetic. I pray today that you will move in these protocols of the prophetic. Some say amen. So when you move outside, hear me now. When you move outside of these protocols, then you can be in danger. You can move into error and heresy. When you move outside of these protocols, these systems, these rules that help you govern the realm of the gifts of God, when you move outside of these protocols, you can be in error. You can move in witchcraft. You can be deceived. You can become a false prophet. You can move in manipulation and witchcraft and error and a heresy, okay? It can become dangerous. That's why us as prophetic people, as a prophetic community, we need to understand the protocols of the prophetic. Some would say, amen. All right, what is a protocol? A protocol is a boundary. Some would say boundary, okay? There are boundaries and... In every season, these boundaries can increase or expand. Okay, some say boundaries, all right? I pray that God will increase and expand your boundaries, okay? 
and every season the boundaries can increase and expand okay um and i I want to live in the will of God, in the boundaries of His grace. I want to live in the will of God and in the boundaries of His grace. When we step outside of the bounds, boundaries, when we step outside of the protocols, outside of the will, the word of God, then we can become susceptible to danger. Okay, amen. The prophetic. It's nothing to fool around with. It's nothing to play with. It's nothing to flirt with. The prophetic is a kingdom grace. is a kingdom realm. Okay? That is the testimony of Jesus. And is powerful. Okay? You follow me? Um, imagine like a school of Jedi Knights. Okay? Or like the school of X-Men. Of these mutants. All right, they're all gifted. They're all gifted, and they all have their own uh, individual experiences. But when they come and enroll into the school of Jedi Knights, the school of X-Men, they begin to grow and accelerate, and they begin to operate at greater, higher levels because there's a protocol, and when you submit and come under and honor the protocols, then you will increase in stature and become more effective in who you are. Does that make sense? So, you're welcome. You are welcome to the school of Jedi Knights. You are welcome to the school of X-Men today and women today. All right, amen? So, the first protocol of the 10 protocols of the prophetic, and I want you to share this Facebook Live broadcast, I want you to share. And uh, once again, please do. And yeah, darling, you love Jean Grey and Rogue. Yeah, you're kind of like them. You. <laughs> My favorite X-Men is Wolverine and Colossus. All right. So I want you to share this broadcast, all right? Because we're, now we're going to start the 10 protocols of the prophetic. Number one, the first protocol of the prophetic is to pursue the prophetic. Someone say pursue, okay? Um, Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Someone say seek. We are seekers of the Holy Ghost. We love to seek. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. When you ask, the, you will be given. When you knock, the door will be open. When you seek, you will find. We are seekers. 1 Corinthians 12, 31. I love this. But earnestly, eagerly, come on somebody, eagerly, earnestly, desire the higher, the greater gifts. And I will show you a more excellent way, which is the way of love. Of course, it's the Apostle Paul. But earnestly, eagerly, desire the greater gifts. I don't know about you, but I'm always desiring the greater gifts. I'm always desiring the greater things of God. Listen, this is fun. I, I'm, I'm seeing some comments. All right, stop being so religious or sacrilegious, okay? If you have a favorite X-Men character, I want you to comment below right now. I want you to comment below. Listen, God can speak through secular things, okay? God can speak through movies, through music, through songs. He's not limited, all right, to just the Bible and the Word of God. The Word of God is is actually more than just the Bible. I hope you hear me, okay? Uh, the word of, the written word of God is uh, the inerrant uh, word that is written to his people. But Jesus is the living word. The word of God is, is more than just the Bible, okay? Um, Wonder Woman, amen. I'm just waiting for the comments here. Seems to be a little bit of a delay in seeing the comments here. If you don't know what X-Men is, that means uh, you're either not my era or whatnot. Anyways, mine is Wolverine as well. Heather, great. Mine is Storm Sharon, yes. <laughs> you look like Storm with your short hair, you know. <laughs> Uh, 
shot a storm also the lightning i got a captain marvel costume because i want people to marvel at the lord wonderful amen come on now all right anyways let me keep uh, wonder woman wonder woman amen Super, uh, storm wonderful by the way wonder woman is not an x-men but i got you no worries <laughs> all right let me keep moving on all right number one the first protocol of the prophetic is to pursue okay let me keep quoting some scripture here all right i love soul all right silver surfer juan martinez wonderful i love soul okay first samuel 9 18 then saul approached samuel in the gate and said tell me where is the house of the seer okay of course we know the story king saul before he became a king saul's donkeys all right saul's democrats yeehaw, saul's democrats went loose they were lost like joe biden all right he lost his brains his cahoots he doesn't know what he's talking about he thinks he's running for senate not for president and he's for show sure going to lose on november 3rd 2020 bam so saul lost his democrats the donkeys and of course uh his father says you need to go to the house of the seer so Saul began to search for the house of the man of God, of the prophet seer. And so he was seeking the seer. Someone say seeking the seer. Saul was seeking for the prophet. He was looking for the answer, the man, the woman of God. Saul was going after the answer. Come on, somebody. So we need to earnestly desire, pursue the greater gifts, the things of God. We need to go after it okay so the first protocol of the prophetic is pursue and if you do not pursue then it will not be released revealed or given to you simple all right it's very simple but it's everything it's foundational all right but here's the thing when you and i are so busy wanting to seek a word then we can enter into realms that god never wanted us to when we are so busy going to this conference, that conference, and yeah, we're hungry, but you need to be aware. I hope you hear me. You need to be aware of who is speaking into your life. Do not let anybody speak into your life. And that's the problem with, with some of you, and that's the problem with most of you, all right? You can avoid so many problems of confusion and witchcraft, all right, and soul ties, and spiritize you can avoid these types of issues and conflicts of confusion by being choosy and careful to whom you allow to speak into your life not everybody is your prophet not everybody is a prophetic voice into your life Shoo. not everybody and here's the problem lots of people get into confusion because they get so many different words from so many different people and it begins to contradict it is contrary it begins to cross lines oh pastor ben said that i should do this but i heard this prophet he's telling me i need to do this so who do i listen to what is god saying listen you need to in a sense be committed to in a sense following the right person the right word in each season instead of being a hush posh and having and listening to so many different lying spirits not everybody's yours not everybody's for you like i said before many times not everybody is your spiritual father not everybody is your spiritual mother and the same way not everybody is your spiritual son and not everybody is your spiritual daughter Okay, and you are not meant to prophesy to everybody, all right, and you are not, listen to me, all right, you are not meant to go here and there everywhere seeking for a word. You pursue God, okay, and when prophets and people confirm some things, then uh, when prophets call you out or affirm you in public or read your mail, it's actually more so supposed to be a confirmation, because you already have a relationship with God and you've been hearing Him. Prophets are to confirm and affirm, okay? We're, we're not meant to be your answer to everything, all right? We're not a puppet. We're not, we're not a genie in a bottle, 
you know, we're not we're not a vending machine. We're we're not like the eight ball where you shake. It's like give me the answer, prophet. No, no, no. All right, we are servants of the Lord. Okay. All right. Anyways, so the first protocol of the prophetic is pursue, but be careful with who and how you pursue things. Okay. All right. I'm gonna keep moving on. Number two, the second protocol of the prophetic. Someone say second. The second protocol of the prophetic is the name someone say the name okay listen jesus is the only name in which we prophesy we do not prophesy in the name of uh, this prophet in the name of this we we do not prophesy in the name of allah in the name of buddha in the name of muhammad in the name of joseph smith in the name of mormonism we do not prophesy in the name of this prophet in the name of this man woman we do not prophesy in the name of an angel, in the name of an occult group. We do not prophesy in the name of Hail Mary, in the name of this saint, in the name of Saint Peter, in the name of Archangel Michael. We do not prophesy in any other name, in any other door, okay? This protocol is essential. We do not, the realm of the prophetic must be in the name of Jesus, in the door of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the gate. You pass through me. Come on, somebody. You come through me. All right. So we do not seek necromancy, okay? We do not go for familiar spirits. Remember, King Saul was so desperate for an answer for a word, okay? And listen, we need to have a hunger and we need to be passionate, but we need to not be so desperate that we start knocking on wrong doors. We start knocking on mediums. We start knocking on fortune tellers, wizards, wicked witches. We start going to fortune tellers, palm readers. We start going to different doors, okay? We need to only go through the door of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. All right, Shakaraba. Stop going to the door of a fortune teller, all right, of a psychic. Stop going to the door of a witch, of a shaman, of a medicine man. Stop going to a door. Stop going to any other door. King Saul was so desperate for an answer. Why? Because the grace of God lifted off of his life. And, and he needed an answer. And of course, Samuel was was angry and disappointed with Saul. So his prophet, Samuel, <laughs> removed himself. Isn't that a scary thing? The Holy Spirit, the grace of God, the hand of God removes himself. And then secondly, the prophet, which is meant to be an armor bearer to you and the spirit, removes himself as well. That's a scary thing, right? So what does Saul do? Saul gets desperate. So he begins to go seek for a medium. All right, he, he pursues a lying spirit. He pursues another door, the door of a stranger, the door of darkness, the door of demons. So, so we must go through the door of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Amen. Someone say amen. I'm telling you, people of God, I'm telling you, the name of Jesus. All right. That is the second protocol of the prophetic. Someone say amen. Not to Mary. Not to Peter, not to Paul, and not to anybody in the cloud of witnesses. Only Jesus Christ himself. So I'm saying amen. All right. The third protocol of the prophetic is obedience. Some say obedience. Okay, obedience. Um, once again, we as prophetic people, um, we must obey uh, the word of the Lord. What is God saying? Okay. We're not people pleasers. We please God. We serve God, okay? We're not people pleasers. I, I love uh, in the Old Testament uh, when the king came before the prophet and said, please give me a good word, you know? I, I didn't want to invite you in because I knew that you would give me uh, a hard or a negative word, right? And, you know, I'm telling you, not all prophets will be accepted. Not all prophetic people will be liked. Not all prophetic people will be invited to the party. Because, you know, you cannot be bought. You cannot be sold out. You're not a sellout. Like, like you know, you're sold out for Jesus. You know, you you died. You, you paid the, the price. And so, because you cannot be bought by platform, praise of the man, fame, fortune, woman, Men, 
You cannot be bought by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life because you can't, because you're so satisfied in God. <clears throat> you will obey, okay? And here's the thing. Too many prophetic people and prophets are moving out of obedience. What does that mean? They're doing and saying things that God never told them to say nor do. Did God really tell you that? Or <clears throat> did you hear incorrectly? Were you presumptuous? Okay, did you assume something? Come on, somebody, all right? And that's the thing. Remember, being presumptuous is witchcraft. The Bible here says, let me go to the, the, the scripture here, okay? Are you with me today? If this is good, say, you preaching good, Pastor Ben. You preaching good, all right? First Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. My gosh. Divination is witchcraft. Rebellion, okay? Rebellion and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. <clears throat> so you can be prophetic, but when you're not obeying and you're being rebellious and proud, you're actually moving in divination, sorcery. You're moving from a different realm, a different spirit. Okay, yeah, the gift is there, <clears throat> but you're moving out of a wrong spirit. A wrong influence and uh, you begin to move in idolatry presumption okay people of God we as prophetic people need to guard ourselves from presumption okay we are not untouchable we are not above okay we are not uh, you know like no we need to be we need to be obedient Prophesy do only what God is saying. Thus saith the Lord. All right. Amen. Number four. The fourth protocol of the prophetic. Someone say number four. The fourth protocol of the prophetic is timing. Someone say timing. Okay. Some of you are not accepted or received because it's not yet your time. Um, all right. Listen, if God shows you something, speaks to you something, reveals something to you, we need to pray about it, okay? Not being so haste. Stop being in a rush. Unless you know that God is, there's an urgency, there's a, a call, there's a thrust, there's a power, there's a convicting force, there's a conviction, and you're like, oh my gosh, Pastor Ben, I need to release this word. This is a word from the Lord. I need it. Then then you know there's a timing and lots of people are off time they're they're off timing they're not rejected they're not they're, they're not received they're rejected and it does more damage and harm than good because the timing is off the prophetic person has a duty to yield to the lord and to yield the words and revelations to the lord listen I've said this many times. Uh, uh, I've said this many times that, you know, uh, a per because a prophetic person is so deep, okay, there's much more that meets the eye to the prophetic person than what we see and what we know, okay? But many times it takes years, months, weeks for a revelation to finally be released. Why? Because... When a prophet is revealed, when something is revealed to a prophetic person, they pray over it, they brood over it, they weep over it, they cry over it, rather than just releasing it to the public. So we can't do more damage and harm because our timing is off, okay? Our timing is off, okay? We need to move in the Kairos timing of the Lord. And I guarantee you, when your timing it, as a prophet, when it's the right time, pow, 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 doors open, bam, 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 things begin to happen, bam, like look at Prophet Tracy Allen Cook, he's been in ministry for 20 plus years, but this year it's just like bam, 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 he's in a sense become one of the main major prophetic voices in America and in this time, 
Where did he come from? He's been in ministry for over 20 years. But all of a sudden, bam, the right time. Pow, 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 pow. Someone say amen. And I'm telling you, there's a right time, people of God. Stop trying to puff up. Stop trying to self-promote. Stop trying to push a prophetic agenda. Stop trying to push yourself. Don't you love it when certain prophets or ministers come to a meeting or a church and, you know, they, they show up so they expect you to give them some time on the mic? It's like, siéntate. Sit your butt down. It's like, no, no, no. Like, you know what I mean? And so, patience. Pro prophets, prophetic people must be patient. Must endure long suffering. All right, timing. Someone say time. There's a right time to prophesy, all right? Even when you're in a meeting, etc. All right, you need to ask people politely, okay? You need to, you know, be have a proper prof prophetic etiquette, you know? Honor, like, you know, uh, so ask. You know, there's a right timing, you know? When, when, when I'm preaching or when the man of God or when the preacher's preaching, all right, is that the right time for you to share a prophetic word with somebody in, in the crowd, in the seats? Maybe, maybe not. Don't be a distraction. There is a corporate order of things, okay? There's a right timing. All right. The fifth protocol to the prophetic is authority, okay? We need to understand the authority of a meeting. The authority of a house, okay? Listen, um, there's very few times, very, you know, I, don't, I, I honestly don't go anywhere, okay? Because I'm, I'm so, you know, we're just busy doing what we need to do, what God's called us to do. But if I ever go to a conference, like, I respect the authority of the house. I'm not coming as, I am the major prophet, Look at me, I've come, everybody worship me. I don't do that. Like, I have no expectations. I just come to sit and to receive and to honor and to give. Um, I don't expect my time. I don't expect people to give me a platform. I don't expect none of that. I don't need none of that. I already have enough of that. All right, God is my source. He's my provider. Um, but when you, as a prophetic person, you need to understand that there is a proper protocol and authority in every church, in every house. I love Pastor Suzanne. Okay, I honor her as a spiritual mother and as a general of the faith. And in a sense, uh, of course, I am under the covering of my pastors, Pastor Benny and Suzanne Hinn. But when she comes and ministers in my conferences or at my church, she comes under my authority within the local governing house. And she says and repeats that all the time, even from the pulpit. She says, Prophet Ben, uh, I submit to you, what would you like me to do? So we need to respect the authority of the house. I don't care if you're prophetic. I don't care if you're a prophet. I don't care how many years you've been born again to Christ. There is a governing authority of each house, okay? Of each house. Just like if I invite you to my home, you don't just do whatever the heck you want, okay? Yes, there's freedom, but you respect the house, okay? Okay, you respect the home. You respect the atmosphere, all right? You don't just come and do whatever the heck you want unless you've been given the permission to do so, all right? Remember, you need to be invited in, not imposed, okay? Stop pushing yourself. Stop being a pushy prophet. All right, stop trying to, this is not your time to be seen. This is not your moment. This is not your make it or break it moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I need to, you know, this is my moment that I've been waiting for for 10 minutes on the platform of, of Azusa now on the call. Like, no, this, this is just to serve. Just be humble, be submissive. Amen. And... Honor the governing authority. Stop imposing. I I despise it when people like are trying to witchcraft, manipulate me, and impose themselves to make me do something, to make me, you know, promote them or give them time. Like, who are you? Who are you? Like, I don't care who you are. If 
if there's no credibility, if I don't know you, if there's no credibility or relationship that's been stewarded in the spirit, then why do you expect me to bow down to you or why do you expect me to give you time? Like, no, there, there needs to be a, a respect to the authority of the governing house. Otherwise, you are a false prophet. Otherwise, you are moving in a false spirit. Otherwise, you will not be received. And you might just get thrown out. Okay? And that's a shame on you because that means that you're immature, you're improper, and you're proud and presumptuous. Moving in witchcraft. Someone say, you preaching good, Pastor Ben. Amen? All right? You preaching good, Pastor Ben. All right. Remember, you must be invited in, not impose yourself. Okay. All right. The sixth protocol of the prophetic, number six. The sixth protocol of the prophetic is prayer. Okay. Prophetic people need to pray more than they say. I've said that many times. One of my famous quotes. Prophets pray more than they say. Okay. We as prophetic people... We need to embrace the cave, okay? We need to embrace the secret place. There really is no place like the secret place. There really is no place like our cave. Like, like I love the studio. Like, you know, one of my spiritual sons, CJ Chanazo, whenever he walks by this room, he says, ooh, whenever I look at it, I get chills. Like, you know, there's, there's a presence that resides in the studio, I'm telling you. And, um... You know, we as prophetic people need to honor the cave. We need to honor the the prayer room. We need to honor the chamber of secrets, the king's chambers, our secret place with God. We need to be people of prayer, okay? Remember, the Bible says in Proverbs, a man with many words is not without sin. The book of Proverbs also says, that your words can be like golden apples in settings of silver. We, it's, it's not about how much you say. It's about what you say. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. And once again, we need to be obedient to the uh, utterance and the movement of the Lord, the leading of the Spirit of God. And so that when we are, then none of the words will fall to the ground. The Bible says in the book of Samuel that none of none, not even one, of Samuel's words fell to the ground. It was all accepted. It was all received. It was all received. So the sixth protocol of the prophet and the prophetic person is that we must be people of prayer. Okay, we need to pray about certain things instead of quickly saying it doing it all right we need to pray be in agreement of prayer we need to bathe things in prayer all right we need to embrace our cave the secret place that is our foundation that's what we're called to most we're called to be a friend of god in the secret place more so than being the mouthpiece and the hand to this to the people right and again, when there's an off balance, then we can, you know, be more so, uh, you know, inclined, uh, being led by people rather than God. Okay, we want to live for the praise of God, not the praise of the man. Give me some hearts and likes here, people of God. Number seven, the seventh protocol of the prophetic, some say amen, the seventh protocol of the prophetic is... Uh, confidence, okay? Listen, we as prophetic people, we need to be confident, not insecure, all right? There's so many insecure prophets, okay? So many people that are insecure, like we need to be secure in our identity, all right? And we need to be confident and bold in knowing what God has told you. You know that you know that you know you're knower, you're noggin, knows it's just like there's confirmation and there's confidence but because we're confident okay because we're confident 
We also need to be humble because we need to be able to apologize if we were off. Remember, we see in part and we know in part, okay? We see in part and we know in part. And not every prophet is going to get it 100% all the time on this earth. Why? Because we're human beings. And we need to rely and depend on the Holy Spirit. And we need the grace of God amongst one another. Uh, but when, when a prophet or a prophetic person or a prophetic word is off or is wrong or, you know, uh, maybe we missed the mark, you know, we need to apologize. We need to be humble and, you know, and admit that we are just vessels ourselves. And we're doing our best and in integrity to... Uh, be as accurate and true to God's truth and word as possible. And if there becomes a track record that prophetic words are actually being off or it's error, erroneous, it's incorrect or whatever, then maybe the prophetic person needs to sit down and not prophesy or not have a public platform for a season and search and examine our hearts and just go deeper with the Lord. Okay. Remember, um, a new covenant prophet can miss it, right? An old covenant prophet was stoned to death if they missed the mark or if they missed the word. But in the new covenant of grace of Jesus Christ, a new covenant prophet, there's grace for you to learn and grow, and for you to make mistakes, and for you to possibly miss it. There's grace. But be confident. So I'm saying, amen. The eighth protocol of the prophetic is stewardship. Someone say stewardship. Okay. We need to be good stewards of the prophecies that God gives. And really steward your prophetic gift. Which means write it down. You know, bring it to remembrance. Record it. Um, here's the thing. The greatest stewardship is obedience. Okay, You know that a word is from God if it's above you and beyond you. You know. okay. Um, but stop asking for a new word when you did nothing with the last 10 words. Okay, Stop asking. Stop seeking for a new word. Hey, you want a word? Obey. Hey, you want a word? Repent. Hey, you want a word? Give. So, hey, you watching right now, do you want a prophetic word? Obey the last 10 words that God gave you. Oh, but Pastor Ben, it was hard. It, it was corrective. It was a rebuke. Good. Obey that. And then you'll get a new word. Come on, somebody. All right? So, steward. Someone say steward. We need to be proper stewards of the prophetic. And that is the, the, the eighth protocol of the prophetic. Because when you have a lack of stewardship in hearing God's voice, in speaking God's voice, in recording God's voice, in obeying God's when you have a lack of stewardship, then you're not going to gain new revelation. You're not going to gain fresh manna. The ninth protocol of the prophetic is submit. Some say submit. Okay. Um, you know, being a prophetic person is not just about your vertical, personal, individual life. It's about your corporate, horizontal life with the corporate body of Christ. Okay. Here's the thing. We need to be careful about raising our per personal revelation above the biblical revelation and the corporate revelation. Your personal revelation must be in line and be aligned with the corporate word. Otherwise, either the corporate is often wrong or you are often wrong it's okay to have personal revelations personal words from God it's okay 
That's absolutely normal. However, it needs to come into alignment and submission with the corporate word. There are corporate prophetic words, which means that you need to also obey the corporate word that's preached from the pulpit. You're not just being, oh, God told me that I should have no father. The Bible says, Jesus said, I have no father. I have no rabbi. So I'm just, it's just me and the Holy Spirit. And I'm in this loosey-goosey journey. I, I belong to no man. Uh, I am the church. No, 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 honey. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. You are a little pinky finger. You are a little pinky toe. You're not the body. We are the collective corporate body of Christ. But there's a lot of people that are so in their personal revelation that they pride and parade their personal revelation above any other major mainstream prophet, father, mother, corporate words. So now, because you are in pride, you can be deceived and you can become a lone ranger and you can once again be in error because you claim to have the word of God when you do not even listen to other prophetic people who may also have the word of God. Stop claiming that you are a prophet when you don't even listen to other prophetic voices. Submit. Personal, corporate. Okay? We need to also listen to what is God also saying to the corporate, to everybody else. Anybody else. Okay? It's not just about you and your revelation. And that's one of the dangers of today of Facebook and social media is that we are so quick to share my personal revelation. Okay, that's great. But uh, but how is it in alignment? In alignment with every other corporate word. Okay. And the 10th protocol of the prophetic. The 10th and the last protocol of the prophetic is community someone say community come on people of god community i love this because remember elijah had a company of prophets second kings 2 7 50 men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at a distance from them the company the school of the prophets okay the company the school of the prophets all right, we need to be in community and accountability, okay? That is a very important protocol of the prophetic, right? You need to be corrected. You need to be rebuked. You need to grow. You need to be taught. You, you need to admit when you're wrong. You need to confess your sins. You need to repent. You need to be humble. And we need a community of prophetic people that not only champion and celebrate us, come on, not only do they help us steward the gifts and the prophetic words and office over our life, but we need a community where we operate together as a five-fold function and where we begin to operate and be more effective together and really care more about you than your gift care more about you as a person than what god is saying to you listen i don't that's i'm so glad god is speaking to you and you have a word i'm so glad but i'm really more curious about how is that word growing you how are you growing in the word i'm i'm more curious about that We need to be a part of a prophetic community, a prophetic group. And again, if you don't have a local group where you can meet locally, then online, just like this. That's why many of you are connected to me and our ministry online. Be connected to communities, groups, companies that will help champion, that will help celebrate, help edify, encourage, push you forward in the right path and even correct you out of love. Okay. 
People of God, these are 10 protocols of the prophetic. 10 protocols of the prophetic boundaries. It keeps you in the right path. It keeps you in check and it keeps you in the right line. In the paths of God. Not going wayward, not moving in, in the psychic, soulish realm, not moving in the second heavens, not operating through different mediums, but really keeping you in the governing grace of the prophetic. I want you to comment below what spoke to you the most. What did you learn? What did you receive today? In part three, day three of Growing the Prophetic, I want you to comment below what spoke to you. What are you learning? What did you receive today? Did you learn something? Were you convicted on something? Did God speak to you, highlight to you about something? People of God, when we understand and honor these protocols of the prophetic, then God will promote us. God will entrust more to us. He will upgrade us. Amen? I want to pray for you as we close. Lord, I pray for my friends. Help us to be people of honor and integrity, love and wisdom. And I pray for everybody watching that uh, they would grow in the grace of God. She I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. And remember, it's always best to honor the protocols than dishonor. It's always best. It may take longer for you to get noticed or your gift, mantle, office to be recognized and received. It may take a little longer. But the integral way is always best and better than any other way. God bless you.